Beige adipose tissue is a newer area of understanding and uh, we're still learning about it, but it's really interesting and it provides some potential uh, areas for potentially therapeutic intervention into the future. We're not there yet, but we're at the end of the section going to bring up an example of, uh, of that. So what are beige adipocytes? Beige adipocytes are pretty much like brown adipocytes. They're more thermogenically active than white adipocytes. However, beige adipocytes do not develop from the same precursors as brown adipocytes. They develop actually from white adipocytes, which is why they're sometimes referred to as inducible brown or recruitable brown, because they don't start as brown. They start as white, and then they develop into a more brown-like appearance, but they're still different than brown adipocytes, okay? So what kind of things can promote the browning of white adipocytes? Uh, basically stress, <laughs> chronic cold, uh, wasting due to cancer, bariatric surgery, adrenergic stress, um, burning, <laughs> having burns on the body as well, which we're going to see in a, in a future example. These can also all promote the browning of our fat. But if you look at this list, these are not necessarily desirable <laughs> things that we would like to put people through. Okay. So like I mentioned, beige fat, it looks like brown fat, it's, it is multilocular, it is more thermogenically active, but it doesn't, uh, it's not as metabolically active as brown fat, and there's a lower expression of, um, of uncoupling protein 1. Okay, so as far as under a microscope, what might these look like? We know what white fat looks like, we know what brown fat looks like, beige fat, it's like a hybrid of these two. These two. Okay, we're going to see normal white adipocytes, but we're going to see more of this kind of brown-like appearance within the beige uh, adipose tissue. Okay, so typically we see a mixture of kind of white and beige, but looking like brown fat within uh, beige fat. Okay, so what this slide basically shows is it covers one study that is kind of proof of concept that adipocytes, white adipocytes, can be browned into beige adipocytes, which is really interesting. And I like this um, graphic here because what it shows is that as white adipocytes are browned into these beige adipocytes, their thermogenic capacity increases, their cell size decreases, but you'll notice that there's kind of more going on <laughs> in these more uh, beige fat cells. So we see more mitochondria, we see smaller lipid droplets, and this basic, this slide right here is basically a summary of the study that we're about to show, which looks at um, uh, burn victims as a model for the stress that could potentially lead to the browning of adipose tissue, okay, which, which we see happening. Okay? So this is like one week post-burn, two weeks post-burn, three weeks post-burn, and we see an increase in that brown-like appearance. And what I forgot to mention is these red dots represent UCP1, and we see an increase in UCP1 from zero to more <laughs> with these uh, beige fat cells. So here in this slide, we look at more of tissue samples, histological samples from healthy uh, controls and from individuals and that have gone through burn, that, that stress that has promoted the browning of adipose tissue. But this is like evidence to support that we do see the browning of these, these formerly white adipocytes. So first of all, compared to healthy controls uh, and looking at the subcutaneous white adipose tissue, we do see white appearance, white-like appearance, okay? Whereas in the subcutaneous wat of a burn victim, if we look specifically at certain areas, we'll look at cer that certain areas look more brown-like and what I haven't said is that these have been stained for uncoupling protein 1. So we'll see a significant increase in the visualization of uh, uncoupling protein 1 in formerly white fat that has been induced towards brown due to the stress of a burn situation. Okay, And this is just comparing to the more white sections that have been found from a, a burn victim, victim and using as controls. 
Okay. And what this shows is this shows the kind of um, <laughs> the process of browning because we're looking at a person post burn um, to samples of their white adipose tissue uh, after burn um, from day one to day 31. And again, these have been stained for uncoupling protein one. So we see a slowly but increasingly increasing <laughs> amount of, of, of visualized um, uncoupling protein one um, a few weeks, like almost four weeks after, after a burn. And just for the record, they didn't burn these victims <laughs> in order to induce the browning of fat. These, they used a, a population that had gone through burns through other, other reasons. Okay. They, they did these studies in a burn unit. Okay. But the main concept here is we do see the browning of fat in these, um, individuals. Uh, we see it kind of at l in, in a low magnification and we also see this at a high magnification as well. And you can see some more interesting things at a high magnification. At a high magnification you can see that thickened cytoplasm. You can see that large lipid droplet. So, and in this berm victim, you also see more kind of going on, <laughs> especially when we look narrow in on the cytoplasm compared to healthy controls, we see more activity going on in the cytoplasm. We're seeing more lipid droplets developing. We're seeing uh, a little bit more mitochondrial presence as well. But even just if we're looking at this magnification, you're seeing that the lipid droplets getting smaller, okay, compared to a larger uh, white adipocyte. And again, we're seeing more of that thickening of the cytoplasm. And if we were to kind of look at this later on, we would also see more and more of these tiny lipid droplets um, developing, shifting white adipose tissue from unilocular to more of a brown-like appearance of multilocular. So also, unsurprisingly, in these burn victims, we're just kind of showing it in a different way as well. Uh, we see a higher amount of UCP1 protein concentration in burn victims compared to control. And that uh, UCP1 expression, uh, there seems to be a significant increase in it the longer after burn that that person uh, is. So the conclusion of the study is basically that uh, yes, we saw browning in burn victims, and this is potentially an area of study <laughs> given the large amount of uh, adiposity that we see in our population, that this is potentially an avenue of exploration to see if there's something that there that we could use to help individuals with obesity, but we're not there yet, okay? So this is just to kind of bring together the concept of those adipocyte lineages and specifically how beige adipocytes uh, develop. Okay, so remember that of the types of progenitors that exist, some are more of the myogenic li uh, lineage. Okay, and these are ones that are going to express that, uh, that those myogenic markers that we talked about earlier. And these ones that develop from more of the muscular progenitors, they are more likely to develop into brown adipose tissue, depending on the signals they receive. And our white adipose tissue are more likely to develop from these those cells that are negative for that myogenic factor. Okay, so white adipocytes develop from a different lineage than brown adipocytes. However, the beige adipocytes those are developing from white adipocytes, okay? And both brown and beige have thermogenic activity, but their lineages are different, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, kind of putting the pieces together, okay? So as far as what this means for health, as far as beige adipocytes go, so a lot of studies right now are, they're hard to conduct, <laughs> so we often do them in animals. So mice with higher amounts of beige uh, fat are less likely to develop diabetes. They're less likely to develop diet-induced obesity, which again makes sense given what we know about brown fat, okay? Um, while this is interesting, while uh, uncoupling protein one expression is higher than in white adipose tissue in the beige tissues, um, evidence suggests that beige's capacity for thermogenesis 
might not be entirely dependent on the presence of UCP1. There might be something else going on there as well. And that's something important to always realize is that we're still learning <laughs> and we don't, and especially when it comes to obesity uh, and the anatomy and physiology of obesity, we still have a lot to learn. Okay, so we're still trying to figure out what exactly is it that's leading to the full thermogenic capacity of, let's say, beige, beige um, adipocytes. Okay, so for instance, when UCP1 was deleted in mice with lots of beige fats, they still retained their thermogenic capacity, which suggests that there might be something else going on as well. And one study has shown that certain other factors... Okay, if activation of a, of a certain calcium ATPase and a ryanidine receptor perhaps was part of the mechanism that promoted heat production in those mice that were negative for UCP1. So basically the message here is UCP1, we do know is responsible for the thermogenic activity of both brown and beige fat, but in beige fat, there might be something else going on as well that might involve these other structures or might involve something else that we haven't even learned about. Okay, so there might be more potential target. So like I keep saying, this is potentially an area of intervention in the future. We're not there yet, but it's, there's more evidence to support that brown or beige fat might be one little lever that we could pull with respect to obesity, but it's of course not going to change the entire state of obesity. So a newer study out of Harvard, their stem cell um, institute, showed basically proof of concept that we could take white adipose tissue out and induce a browning effect on it. So what they did is they took out developmental stage human white adipose tissue and then used certain gene editing techniques to make that wat overly express UCP1, okay? Then they took that now highly expressing UCP1 wat and placed it into mice. They transplanted it into mice. And what they found is that wat that was induced into more like a brown-like appearance ha behaved like normal brown adipose tissue in those mice. And they also found that the mice that were given those wat to bat <laughs> transplants, they had higher insulin sensitivity, they were better at clearing glucose from their blood, and they gained less weight as well. Okay, so again, it's a promising area of research. We're not there yet, but it's fun to like learn about these new studies. And there's a video that I'll post about this study that gives a little bit more specifics about it. Okay, so to kind of bring this all together, uh, this whole unit together, some take home messages is that the vast majority of adipose tissue that we humans have on our body is white adipose tissue, 95% of it. Okay, white adipose tissue or WAT is usually what we mean when we talk about fat. And uh, yes, its main role is energy storage, but it also has um, endocrine functions. It also has immune functions and it is an active tissue. It communicates with the body through the release of something called adipokines, which we're gonna learn about in the next unit, okay? So majority of, of adipose tissue, white adipose tissue, there's also this brown adipose tissue, which is found in neonates, found in hibernators, and is found in low amounts in adult humans, but the amount of BAT tends to decrease with age, there tends to be lower amounts of BAT uh, the older we are, and there tends to be lower amount of BAT uh, with higher levels of uh, obesity. Okay, What's interesting about brown adipose tissue is that there's expression of this protein called uncoupling protein 1. And remember what's important about that uncoupling protein is it uncouples oxidation, think cellular respiration, and the oxidation that occurs during cellular respiration that uncouples that oxidation with the, with the, the phosphorylation. So typically at the end of cellular respiration, we take, we have a proton gradient that builds up um, at the mitochondria, and that proton gradient, as it tries to come back into the mitochondrial um, membrane, it provides what is needed to drive ATP synthase to phosphorylate ADP and an organic phosphate into ATP. That's what typically happens. Uncoupling protein one uncouples that. And that build up of protons doesn't kind of comes back through the mitochondrial membrane through uncoupling protein one and that kind of force that was built up <laughs> is basically lost. 
okay? And there's a net production of heat, which at the end of the day makes brown adipose tissue thermogenic in nature, okay? And remember, beige adipose, uh, adipose tissue develops from white adipose, adipose tissue. Brown and white develop from different lineages, okay? And then beige adipose tissue develops from the white lineage. And it basically occurs when white adipose tissue is put through some sort of adrenergic stress, typically. Okay, so cold exposure, uh, burning, um, like we said, we saw bariatric surgery can promote this as well, that it leads to the browning of the white adipose tissue where we see a higher expression of UCP1, and we also see a more metabolically active tissue with the ability to um, generate more heat as well. And this is potentially a therapeutic area, potential future therapeutic area for um, uh, increasing metabolic capacity of the body, period, <laughs> and perhaps leading to reduced adiposity, but also reduced um, comorbidities, because we do see an increase in insulin sensitivity with uh, more beige activity. Okay, so that is the anatomy <laughs> of adipose tissue, and now in the future section, in some of the future sections, we're going to start looking at its physiology.